Projecteers, welcome to D-Lab. I've got another concept amplifier idea for you guys that like to experiment around. This time I'm running three 6SN7s in parallel and they're being driven by three triodes. It's about a 3 watt amp. It's a lot of fun to build. Let me give you a guided tour and at the end if you want I'll send you a schematic. All right, so the reason I decided to take this on is because I'm trying to give you guys ideas for building inexpensive amplifiers. Okay, so as you know, there's a glutton of these six SN7s on the market. You can get these things for relatively nothing. And uh, we've already talked about the 6AV6 tubes, which you can get for like a dollar a piece. Now, this one is introducing a new 7-pin tube, and that is the 6AT6. So these two guys are your preamps, and this guy is the driver to run these three triodes that are all wired in parallel. We'll get to that in a minute. Here's my output transformer. It's a PT31 that you can buy for, I think, around $15, so they're not very expensive. It's a 5K primary, 8 ohm secondary. Then the power transformer, in this case, came from this Regency monitor radio and this cabinet has been modified for this guy to slide right in. This is a Hammond 10 by 6 by 2 chassis. Here's my input, volume, treble, bass, and the power switch. Around the back, just got our AC line coming in and output for an 8 ohm speaker. I put a second hole here in case somebody would like maybe a preamp out or strap two jacks in parallel for running a cabinet. Now for the fun part, let's go bottom side. Alright everybody, here's the moment you've been waiting for, bottom side tour of the D-Lab new Concept 6SN7 tube amplifier. The reason I did this is I've been reading on the web and a lot of people have been saying, hey I want to build an amp using 6SN7s as the output tubes, how do I go about that? Well, guys, here it is. So first off, you see I have three of these octal tube bases. And if you look closely, you're going to see these little jumper wires going between elements. So if you take a look at the base of a 6SN7, you'll see that there's actually two triodes apiece in these tubes. Okay. So what I did is I ran jumpers from the cathodes, the plates, and the grids, and turned each of those tubes into one triode. Okay, Then I took the other two tubes and I strapped all those elements in parallel. So we ended up with one giant output tube utilizing three tubes. Now why did I pick that combination? Alright, if you do a little research you'll find that if you strap these two elements together in a single tube it's looking for a plate load impedance of about 15k. So I thought, all right, I'll do that. I'll add two more tubes. And I'll lower that down to 5K so we can use that output transformer. All right, so enough of that. And then periodically here through this little uh, tour, I'll flash up the schematic so you guys can take a peek at that. But I'm not going to leave it up there long because all you have to do is email me and I'll send it to you. All right, so we don't want to just hog up the video showing a line drawing. So I'm going to walk you through the amp. AC line is coming in. Got our fuse. And goes to our power switch. Okay, then it hits the power transformer. These two leads here are the high voltage windings, and they're going to two 1N4007 diodes on the little D-Lab cap rectifier board. First filter cap is 68 microfarad. Then we go through a 220 ohm resistor. And that is where I grab my high voltage. 
So this guy's acting like a cheap choke, right? Got a 47 microfarad at that point. Then we go through a 10K resistor. And I've got another 22 microfarad there. And this yellow line is the preamp voltage going over to feed our preamp section and the driver tube. First preamp tube is a 6AV6. We couple direct through a 68K resistor to that tube. Go through a tone circuit. We go to the second triode, okay? So I found that there was still too much loss after the tone circuit and there was not enough drive for these six SN7s. Remember, these are wired as triodes. There's no screen circuit there to help these guys along, so they're not as sensitive as, say, a 6V6. That is why I added the 6AT6 tube. So these guys do the preamp and the tone, and then from there we reamplify, go through this coupling cap to the grids of the 6SN7s. Now you're going to see these three 1K resistors. Okay, so the cap comes in, and then we go to the each of the tubes grids through the 1Ks. Okay, the reason I did that is to isolate the grids from each other. I didn't want one tube hogging all the current and starving the others. So this guy helps to balance that circuit. And on the other end of the 1K resistors are 1 meg resistors to ground to give enough grid leakage to get those tubes moving. And this circuit works really well. Over here, we got a cathode resistor for our bias. It's a 300 ohm resistor. There's only one and he is strapped to all the cathodes with a bypass cap here. This is a 100 microfarad 50 volt cap. There's my speaker output. So that's pretty much the guide to tour at the bottom side. If you guys have any questions, email me. Now if you look at the schematic you'll see that I did not show the wiring of all three of these tubes. I simply referenced it as 6SN7 times 3. Okay. So that's why you want to take a close look at how I did this. So when you get ready to wire yours up, just follow the map, guys. So it's pretty basic. You could actually build the same circuit using one output tube, say a 6V6. But then you're back up to the cost of, say, a $22 tube, whereas the 6SN7s are probably $0.50 cents a piece, and these preamp tubes might be a buck. So once again, guys, we've created an amplifier where the tube cost is under $5. How cool is that? All right, so I had Tony over here a little bit ago to shake this amp down. Of course, he was very skeptical when I told him what I came up with, but he understands why I did it, okay? When Tony played the amp, I had three 6AV6 tubes, and there was too much gain, okay? So you'll hear that in the video. After he left, I looked it over and said, ah, why don't I just put in a 6AT6 for the driver, right? It's a medium mu tube, so it's going to give me a little bit more current, but not excessive gain. So that's what the amp has right now. Okay, so if you take a listen. Trying to get this down. She's nice and clean. Know that when Tony comes over to play he likes to just dime everything out okay so this thing actually is working very well at low volumes it has plenty of chime this is the fender tone circuit like you'd see in a Princeton so you got your treble and your bass so we bring up the treble bring them back kill our bass guys would like to build this circuit I think you'll be really happy it is a little bit more labor intensive because you have to do your little design of your triode outputs I thought this was kind of cool I actually took this layout and that grid distribution system that you saw from a Johnson Valiant transmitter they ran three output tubes in the same kind of configuration and you guys know I love ham radio all right, let's go to the demo with Tony. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I sure did.
Yeah, man. Oh. All right, so I got Tony in the shop, and we're just going to show you guys an experimental. It's an experimental amplifier. It's running three 6SN7 tubes all in parallel. So there's actually six triodes connected together, and we're running it with three triodes, which is a set of six AB6 tubes. So this is just an experiment. I'm not saying this is the best amp in the world, but it has a unique sound. It's got some traits that Tony kind of likes. So. Something else you, you said you wanted to give like that Marshall yeah, it, thunder attack, whatever yeah. you did there. What was that? Well, I just kind of it sounds it sounds a little better when you just crank it up and just play it dirty. Okay. <laughs> 